This is Change Radio News. Today is Thursday, 30 May 2024. The news read by Advocate Simbiram. Stories making headline. Zan PF removed the C parliamentary committees Mudenda size with Chabang. A standard chartered bank left Zimbabwe as the economic crisis depends. ANC points on tribalism as they fear being defeated by Jacob Zuma's new political party. The news in detail. On Thursday last week, the Speaker of Parliament made a shocking announcement by reversing the parliamentary committee leaders appointed by the current Triple C Chief Administrator, Senator Timba. The Speaker stated that since Senator Timber was barred by the court from contesting under the citizens' question for change, he may not be eligible to correspond with Parliament. However, critics argued that Mudenda should not interfere with any political party's affairs. Let's hear Senator Mafasivanda's comment on this matter. Why has it taken six plus months for Jacob Mudenda, the Speaker of Parliament of Zimbabwe, to have realized that he aid by accepting the appointment made by Honorable Timba. This does not surprise most of us because ZANU PF is panicking due to the recent statement by President Chamisa condemning the delay to resolve the stolen elections of 2023 by Sadak. This therefore made the ZANU PF to panic and counter wrecked that statement made by Ms. Chamisa. We are not moved by these treacherous tendencies and the act of ZANU PF trying to abuse the high offices bestowed to them by people of Zimbabwe. However, now are using them arbitrarily to subjugate the will of the people. ZANU PF is panicking because is now embarrassed that Sadak might act sooner than they expected. ZANU PF is also afraid that the potential chairmanship of SADAC might be withdrawn. Hence, they are doing all tricks in the book to confuse and counteract what the will of people is. Consequently, we are aging Zimbabweans not to panic, but to face the bull by its own ways of retraction, what they had agreed since January, where parliamentary portfolios were cemented and accepted. How could he retract a legitimate appointment? Being recalled doesn't really justify that you will lose your post in a political formation. Mr. Timba became active during the period when President Chamisa was in charge. He was charged to adjudicate and process all legal formalities vis-à-vis -vis the recalled members of parliament. We have evidence of this because up to the High Court, Mr. Timber was representing CCC then. What has made sudden change? Yes, renegades are trying to put a plan where they want to form government of national unity on the basis that they are the legitimate people, yet they are 
they never sponsored even a single member of parliament in Zimbabwe to date. We are surprised really what has gone wrong with Professor Nube. We are not worried much about Chabang because we know what he is and how he has been operating since time immemorial. People now are asking the credibility of Professor Nube. It would appear is now his strategy. 2005, he took the MDC name, yet he was invited by Mr. Changirai to be part and parcel of his cabinet. And now he's hijacking CCC from Chamisa and the bona fide members of CCC, yet he was not even campaigning during the campaigning period. We are so worried why the good professor is turned so sour and counterproductive. Only heavens will tell us, may God bless you. I thank you. The Standard Chartered Bank, a powerhouse in the banking sector, has moved its headquarters to Lusaka. It had settled in Zimbabwe for the past 130 years. Economists have blamed bad governance for chasing away Standard Chartered Bank as business thrives better in a politically stable environment, bringing in the much-needed development, employment and financial assistance to so many sectors. The ANC, which is facing defeat by the new political party led by its former leader Jacob Zuma in Pumalanga and Hauteng, has claimed that the MK party's outstanding performance is due to tribalism. Yesterday, a South African broadcaster interviewed the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy, Kwede Mantashem. Here is what she said. Now, if the impact is in KZ10, it reflects something different. It reflects Zulu tribalism. And I don't think we should actually lock ourselves into Zulu tribalism. Tribalism is a backward form of politics. It is having its time frame, it disappears. So if that is the factor, I'm not worried about it. However, in a conversation with Change Radio yesterday, Zimbabwe-born economic development professor Dr. Edima Yembe said that the higher voter turnout is a disadvantage for the ANC. He went on to express his wish that Zimbabwean politicians and the government could emulate South Africa. Let's hear him speak. There's an aspect I think I just thought I should highlight. Normally, historically, where we have seen elections before, if there is a very high voter turnout, it does not look very well for the ruling party at that point in time. Uh, so I suspect that uh, ANC is going to be hit hard based on what we have observed today. Because usually all these focus, they are built up based on the campaign messaging and so forth. But the actual day of voting tells you a different story. So I I think there was a huge voter turnout, especially for the ANC from that point. Then lastly, I, I really want to say uh, there is a lot of uh, things to learn from our South African brothers and sisters. Um, the election is not a war. <laughs> when the election is uh, put together, uh, announce um, it's not no one deserves to die because of power. Uh, we can still differ EFF there, ANC there, TA there, we can still differ without killing each other. But most importantly, what is important is the will of the people. And I like what um, the, the leaders of these parties have been uh, communicating. Some of them will say, yes, I know there is a challenge here, but if the people of South Africa believe that we are not ready, we will go back and work again. So I think even uh, um, uh, President Ramaphosa was saying the same thing, to say, we believe we are going to win, but we will accept the results. 
So it, it, it is my hope that he, uh, just across the Lipopo, we are able, also able to appreciate that he, one man, one vote is a thing. Democracy is a good thing. If people don't believe in your policies, allow them to uh, mark you down so that you can improve. Because that's how we develop. We develop by learning. And if you're a politician, you learn by results. So that's the, the, the basic feedback you get as a politician when people don't vote for you. It means they're not happy. The Zambia government plans to raise the minimum age for bus and combi drivers to 30 to reduce traffic accidents and fatalities primarily caused by reckless driving. They said this measure aims to ensure only mature, experienced drivers operate public service vehicles. With over 2,000 annual road traffic deaths, negligent driving is the primary cause. During a Senate questions and answers session, Transport Minister Felix Mona mentioned that the ministry, in collaboration with the Attorney General, is working to synchronize the age limit for public service drivers. Previously set at 25 years, they now propose increasing it to 30. However, this new law is punitive as it restricts employment opportunities for young, unemployed drivers without addressing the root causes of reckless driving. Meanwhile, speaking to a local broadcaster today in Harare, she read the Central Member of Parliament Honorable Robafazo Makumire urged the removal of road and wealth vehicles to prevent accidents and government losses. He calls on the Traffic Safety Council to make use of safety campaigns. Let's hear him speak. Statistics indicate that uh, on a daily basis we lose five people and annually the government is losing uh, an estimate of 406 million to road traffic accidents and um, breadwinners of families are um, being lost in these accidents and uh, you know the, the, the economic value of expenses that are associated with these road accidents um, it's, it gives uh, us a worrying concern. So, um, in a bid to address this uh, problem, uh, the government needs to enforce a statutory instrument which was um, issued uh, in 2023 to reduce uh, speed limits for public transport. This will go a long way in addressing this uh, road traffic accident because most of them they are they, they, they are related to overspeeding, and that has to be enforced by the ZRP. Uh, Additionally. Um, and roadworthy vehicles must be banned, implying all these roads because those are some of the vehicles that are causing these accidents. Number three, the, 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 the Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe must continue with awareness campaigns to educate motorists on, 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 on safe driving and the, the importance of life on the road. Um, additionally, I am of the view that those who are not qualified to drive those who do not have experience to drive public transport must not be allowed to be on their roads. And this, again, is an issue to do with enforcement of road traffic and safety uh, regulations. Thank you very much. Residents of Bedbridge have been caught off water by Zimbabwe National Water Agents because of the debt they owe it, of which they have been paying Zig 20,000 per week, but Zinwa felt it was too late to. This was said by Bedbridge Town Clerk Laudin Ramak Gapolam. Analysts have been saying right to life needs also to be respected as they are getting payment of the debt partly. A feared CIO operative Gilbert Mere died in a car accident yesterday morning between Pandawana and Chivu while driving from Harare. Mere is known for terrorizing opposition supporters and leaders in Gutum. His recent action was when he notoriously stormed the Chatsworth Clinic on November 8, 2023 and assaulted Triple C activist Patrick Chimbare before forcing police to handcuff Chimbare in the clinic. Despite a police report filed against Mary and Martin Nikearamba, Gutu police have not acted. Former Member of Parliament for Mount Pleasant and Human Rights Activist Fazai Maere has posed several questions while comparing the old Zimbabwe and the new Zimbabwe under Emerson Nangagwa. 
She highlighted that the country used to hold international conferences without the need for innovations and road resurfacing as is being witnessed today. She wrote this on her blog today, describing what the ZANPF government is doing as mediocre and stating that the country has been reduced to junking. As the cholera crisis continues to spread across Zimbabwe, we at Change Radio encourage citizens to wash their hands with soap and running water, not to eat half-cooked meals, not to buy vegetables and fruits from street vendors, to always boil water before drinking and maintain good hygiene always. Finally, sports news. In the Castle Laga Premier Soccer League, Dynamo's goes its playback when its former player, Tawaya the Flying Dr. Murewa, donated a bus to his former club Dynamo's, Nyasha Mushekwi donated a bus to Caps United some years back. In the same vein, 200 football fans from Zimbabwe want to go and watch their country team, the Warriors, play with Lesotho in the World Cup qualifier match and the Kosafa Men's Tournament at Orlando Stadium on June 7, 2024, and Bafana Bafan at Free State Stadium on June 11, 2024 in South Africa. This was said by Zimbabwe national soccer supporters, in particular Joseph Mutau, who added that they are appealing for USD 48,000 to cover food, transport, accommodation and other expenses. In the English Premier League, Liverpool FC commemorates 39 football fans who died at Hessel Stadium in Belgium 39 years ago. Before the European Cup final between Liverpool and Juventus on May 29, 1985, events in Block Z led to the death of 39 people and left hundreds injured. Floral tributes were placed beside the Hessel Memorial plaque on the second Douglas stand at Anfield and flags across all club sites are flown at half mast. Billy Hogan, CEO at Liverpool FC, expressed condolences and emphasized the significance of remembering this tragic event in the club's history. Euro 2024 soccer tournament will run from June 14 to July 14 in Germany. Teams are divided into six groups, with matches held across various cities like Munich, Cologne and Berlin. To end the bulletins, here are the headlines once more. ZAN PF removed the triple C parliamentary committees, Mudenda sides with the Chabang. A standard chartered bank left Zimbabwe as the economic crisis deepens. ANC points on tribalism as they fear being defeated by Jacob Zuma's new political party. Have a good evening.